Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. And I forgot to film my intro. <laughs> so, doing it at the end of the week. I actually don't remember if I filmed an intro, but, well, here we go. Again, don't know how long this is gonna be, but this is my Saturday vlog, meaning that I vlog a little bit every day when I'm doing stuff, and uh, put it all together, and that's this week in gardening, or twig. And I keep forgetting to title it that, so I guess I don't need to explain. Whatever, here we go. Somewhere in here, there's an Nepenthes floating around. It was in there, and I had it hanging from here, and then I come out in the morning, and it was gone. So the koi stole it. And a little while ago, I was standing back there, because I was cleaning the filter out. That's why the water's kind of murky. I was cleaning the filter, watering, and I saw it go floating through here. It looked kind of cool like a jellyfish, but I couldn't get to it because I wasn't here. So right now I'm trying to find my Nepenthes. It looks like there's like a whole ball of leaves and things over here. In fact, I actually think I see it. Are you? I might just need to use my hands for this. Are you the Nepenthes? Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Well, there's what's left of that. See any roots? Man, I'm glad they don't chew on my orchids like this. That would be a disaster. I'm gonna let you live over here for a while. Hopefully that humidity might help regenerate some roots. I really don't know though. Uh, we'll see what happens. Time to water some plants. Outside. It is around 70 degrees. It is so beautiful outside. But the plants are looking a little bit thirsty. I just finished watering these guys. I went ahead and I moved the windmill palms out because it's been in the 50s and 60s here for the past couple days and it's supposed to remain I think the coldest day coming up in the 10-day forecast is like 37. Well, the low is 23. That's the coldest. So they'll be okay. They're going to have a few days to dry out before the cold gets here. The azaleas, <laughs> she was very thirsty. So hopefully she's going to park back up now. What was more important were the things on my front porch. Oh, that's that's dangerous. Why don't you just I'm gonna use my camera? So you go this way. Go on. Go on. Was that fun? Ugh. Oh. Such a beautiful day. As you can see over here, things didn't really do very well with the cold spot. I mean, this is a lissom, so I wasn't expecting it to do anything. I usually put pansies out here in ivy in the winter, but I didn't this year. This arbor, arborvata, arborvitae, depends on what you want to call them. You can tell they're a little bit dry. They don't have the sheen. Their leaves are a little bit droopy. Or I should probably show you the other one. This one. <laughs> this one very dry and i have been keeping this watered but i guess not enough or it was so cold that it just wasn't taking that water up so i watered it the humidity is up we'll see if it perks back up i think it'll be all right these ivies are needing some pruning need to go in here and really just clean all of these out and that piece back there up against the window looks good though i don't want that to attach to the house though oh crap it already has oh well i can tear it out uh, but these uh, cabbages and kales, I'd say that they are toast. Like, that's pretty, pretty squishy. Oh, it smells really bad. Yeah, those, those didn't handle the cold very well. Oh, they are happy today. Cleaned their filter out and did all kinds of stuff. They seem to appreciate it. I watered very, very heavily, it took like three hours, but it got really warm and it's very warm outside. It's close to 70, which means it's very warm in here. I actually turned the heaters off, or I think, no, there's still one heater on. So it's like 80 degrees in here, humidity is at 40%. Kind of low, but it's an improvement over the 14 and 12% that I've been seeing. And I'm kind of sick of getting hit in the face with branches, so I'm gonna trim those real quick. I don't normally prune my palms just because they're in my way, but, you know, these Robolinis, they flush out new growth fairly heavily, so it should be okay. Ah, much better. Every time I walk through this thing, I have leaves in my face. And the other day, a spider ended up on me. So, 
Got that done. So I've been having some tripod struggles lately. This is what I've been using. I have a few of these. And it's worked okay, but they just... The little legs and stuff keep snapping on them. So it's not staying upright. My phone uh, is pretty heavy. And I do most of my vlogging with my phone. The videos during the week are usually with my camera. But stuff gets mixed up. So this is what I use for my camera. It's this big Joby. Really sturdy, tough, no phone attachment. Which is why I got this. This... Just screws right on there and you put your phone in it. So I'm pretty excited about that. In theory, it should just go right on there. Probably not with one hand though. Or I could take the hotkey out. Maybe I'll do that. I'd say that worked just fine. Now, adjusting angles is going to be a little bit more tricky because this doesn't have the same neck on it like that one does, but still doable. And now I can have this actually set up on my other tripods too. Finally. So you might be wondering what's going on over here. I bought myself some flowers. It was a long day. I wanted something bright and cheery to have around. Also, the mic is kind of facing the waterfall, so I'm sorry if that's kind of obnoxious. So I'm going to toss together a quick flower arrangement, nothing elaborate. This is the vase I'm using. It has all these little nodules in it, so it's a little bit easier to go kind of free-formed with it. But with these, I generally like to have the hydrangeas down low. Oh, I should say this. So I have six stems of hydrangea here and three, uh, and three sprays of Easter lilies. Three stems, I should say. So the Easter lilies, I want to make sure have more height than the hydrangeas. General rule of thumb with flowers is you want to go up about an inch and make your cut a very clean cut at a diagonal. Now that's not going to be high enough, probably. Let's see here. No, that actually, that might be just fine. Right around the edge. That'll do. So I'm gonna take about an inch off of all of these. Take some of them up a little bit higher than others, just because I want there to be some variation in height. These guys are very thirsty. Okay, so here's what we have to start with. I think that looks nice, but I think having the lilies in here, maybe I might just put them in the middle I think that'll look nice. Sometimes I like to stick things in between, but this isn't quite as full as I was hoping it would be, so that may not work. I'm just gonna poke this guy down in here, like so. This lily, this lily's a little tangled up. We'll come through the front. Sprays are all at different heights, so I think that this is gonna work out well. For the buds, not the sprays. And before I forget, I need to put water in that vase too. That's kind of important. Now, you know, these cut flowers always come with these little packets of plant food. I like to dissolve it in at least a pint. There's usually actually directions. Yeah, it says a pint. I'm going to use half the packet, though, because the more often you change the water, the longer they're going to last. So this way I have a little bit to go through when I clean this out and put fresh water in it later. All right, and for some reason, this plant food have a gel, which I'm not used to seeing. That's fine. It'll work. Come over here and stir that up. Make sure it's nice and dissolved. Then I'm going to go ahead and pour this on into my base. All right, now let's go ahead and throw the rest of these lilies in there. And all done. Now, the height differentiation is not really great, and the flowers are already kind of wilty, so hopefully these will perk up sooner than later. Quick, easy color. I would throw some more stuff in here if I had it, but I don't, and I was trying to keep it nice and cheap, so... I like it, and the lilies smell fantastic. These are very toxic to cats, though, so if you have cats, put it where they can't get to it. Okay, so, didn't vlog anything yesterday because it wasn't really a plant day. I went to a hockey game. It was a lot of fun. The seats were amazing. I don't know if you guys like hockey, but St. Louis Blues are a pretty good team, so that was a really good time. They have a new... What's the thing called? The giant screen that hangs from the Megatron? I don't know. I can't remember what it's called. That was fun. Lots of lights, lots of music. Was a blast. But because of that, I wasn't in the bubble yesterday. And it was 60-something degrees outside yesterday, which means it got pretty warm in here. I think the last reading I saw, it was like 92? Yeah, that's too warm. I, I would like to get a thermostat set up in here, but the temperatures swing so much. I don't see that happening this year. I do have a device that I can hook to my Wi-Fi and has little sensors 
and it'll keep track of my temperatures for me and send alerts to my phone and like gives me a graph of how things change. It's actually really cool. The problem is the company got bought out. It was AccuWrite. It's still AccuWrite, but it got purchased. It's a long story. Now the software doesn't work, and I've been in contact with customer support, and it, I still I can't get it to work. So I'd have to like buy a new one. It was like 80 bucks. So I don't know if I'm going to do that. It would be kind of nice, though, so I would at least have an alert that lets me know, like, hey, it's over 90 degrees. Go turn the heater off. Or, hey, something's wrong. Maybe your power's out. It's, like, below 50. Whatever the case is, doesn't matter. Because of the heat, uh, plants got a little bit dehydrated. I would not normally soak a primrose, but this thing was hanging on to dear life when I came out here this morning. So it's getting a soak because these guys they don't like heat so these are a great spring plant a great fall plant winter plant indoors or if you live down south where it's warm good winter plant but like in summertime where i live they just fizzle away and die it's too hot so even you know 89 to 92 in here was too much for it so i'm gonna rehydrate it and move it back into my house where it's cooler also with these higher temperatures, I'm having to adjust. I'm having to relearn my habits. So it's in the past, I would water all these plants maybe every other week because it was cool. It was like in the 60s in here. And plants were just getting by. They weren't thriving, and that was something that I was hoping to improve on, and I did. But in order to have them thriving, I need the heat, I need the light, I need the humidity, airflow, and water. That's kind of, you know, really important. They need water. Plants need water. So I'm going to have to start watering more frequently, and I can't keep doing it by hand. It's too much. It takes way too long. So I have my pump here, which I've talked about before, and I found some spare corrugated tubing. It's, I only have 10 feet of it, though. I'm going to need a lot more, and I was just barely able to get it onto this adapter. It's not on there all the way. The problem with corrugated tubing is that it's a nightmare to work with when it comes to... It doesn't just slip over a fitting. And, uh, I, you know, I used my heat gun on it, but it only went so far. It still didn't go on all the way. So, you know, this will, in time, after just a few simple tugs, pop right off. And I can put a clamp on it. I'm not going to bother, though, because I only have 10 feet of it. And with only 10 feet of it, well, that's not enough. I have to order more. So I'm going to have to change this out when more tubing comes in, when it comes in the mail. So I don't, I don't want to make more work than I have to. I could just put a coupler on the end of this tubing, but that would mean... Uh, I'd have to attach one, two, potentially three more fittings onto tubing that's impossible to get a fitting onto. I don't want to do that. I'd rather just swap it out and do it one time. So that's what's going on there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this rigged up onto my pump and do a light watering. And then I found a nice piece of lava stone that I think will look, or not look, but I think will work well for this guy up here. I keep wanting to call it my Schlumbagar. I was doing that before. They'll call it my uh, Schlumberkia, but it's a Myrmicifolia. Mer uh, whatever. I'm fumbling with my words because I'm talking too fast. But uh, I'm going to try and attach that potentially. I need to go outside and have a look at my Saracenias because they need 40 to 45 days below 40 to 45 degrees. And it's been rather warm. I mean, we were very cold. We were at negative 8 Fahrenheit a few weeks ago. But we've had regular dips into the 50s and 60s now. With plenty of lows in the 20s as well. But that's still, I need to have a look at them and see what's going on with those. But first, I need to get this rigged up and see if it's going to work for watering. It's going to be a challenge because I only have 10 feet of hose. So it's really not going to work well. But if I can keep my finger over the end of it and spray, then I can at least do that for humidity. And give everything a spray during the day and make sure my fans stay on because of mold and fungus. It's just a whole big mess of stuff to do. And here's all the different fittings I've been working with. Not gonna lie, kinda over it already. Oh, and I need to figure out what's going on with this filter back here. I just cleaned the pad, so it should be getting enough flow, but the water's all trickling off and being kinda dumb. I don't know what to do there. But, okay. Yep, back to work. Okay, I'm actually surprised with how much flow I'm getting out of this guy. This might work just fine. Let's see. Look at that. Not the most ideal way to water. I'd prefer the water to go straight to the soil and not all over the leaves. But, you know, sometimes life gets busy and I need to just get out here and quickly water things. So this is very nice. Look, see, I can even get up there to my hanging basket. Look at that. 
So maybe I don't need more tubing. Maybe I can just stand still and just water like this when I really need to. Awesome. Finally. There's something so much more satisfying about just holding the hose and doing it like this. This Oncidium is so thirsty up here. Yeah, this is bringing back memories of spring. Oh, I'm happy with this. All right. I should actually focus on what I'm doing here so that I'm not wasting the water because every bit of water I use to water the plants comes out of here and has to be replaced. And I don't want to shock the fish any more than necessary, which would, I mean, ideally wouldn't shock them at all. So, yep, going to finish this up. Okay, that's all done. It was kind of a heavier watering than I was planning on doing because this is much more effective than I thought it would be. That's all right, because uh, things were kind of thirsty and got pretty hot. I didn't mention that when I've been watering, I have also been dropping my temperatures. I turn two of my heaters off. That's partially a safety thing, just because I don't want my... I don't, I don't want to get electrocuted. But I don't mind the temperature dropping when I'm watering, because that's natural. That's what happens when it rains. Even in the rainforest, temperature drops. You know, it can get into the 50s, even upper 40s when it rains. So... Uh, it went from 92 to 76, and then I'll probably wait a little bit longer and flip those guys back on when things dry out a little bit. This is also really helping out with the humidity. By having this rigged up this way with this hose, I can do frequent light waterings from this point and on. Today it had to go a little bit more heavy, and that's going to help with the humidity. The humidity was only at 17%, which is horrible. I don't even understand how that's possible, because the humidity outside is like 80% because it's been drizzling off and on a little bit. And I've had some of my zipper doors cracked open because it's been fairly warm. I had the garage door open to help get the humidity in here and to help drop that temperature quickly because that's good for the orchids. I uh, probably need to pull these guys up. They've been soaking for quite a while, but they're very dry. What else was I... I don't know, but that's what that is. I accidentally knocked over a pretty little fairy garden thingy here with the hose. I'm going to have to be more careful in the future with that. So I need to tidy him up. Yeah, for now I'm just going to throw these guys back in there so they're at least all together. I can't find the little little margarita. It'll turn up, hopefully. I was thinking about kind of redoing something with this anyways because the sand is so fine when I watered it, it was coming up, so that's alright. And there's still enough soil in there that the plant's okay, so at least I found the pieces. Oh, and I'm missing a crystal. Yeah, so apparently I knocked that down too. You have to be more careful in the future with the hose. Oh, sorry about the noise. When the water level's low, that thing's even louder. And it takes a very long time to refill this thing. In the meantime, I have this passion flower here that went dormant because it was cold. But it's been warm enough that it's starting to come back. There's a little bit of green in here, so I need to cut this dead stuff off and give it a good watering and I'm gonna go ahead and just let it resume its growth. It's had a good I'd say maybe 10 to 12 weeks of dormancy which is plenty so let's do that. I really don't think I even need these bamboo pieces in here anymore. Those are not necessary because it's not vining but I will put that back in when the growth is probably around a foot high, maybe 18 inches, and then just get in here and snip, snip, and just snip off anything that's brown from down low. Kind of the nice thing about cutting them down low is you can usually just come on and pull this stuff right out. So you see that green in here, and this thing, poor thing so dry, it had new foliage coming up on it, and it's already shriveling up. So I'm going to make that cut right around there. I think another one right there. Ah, there we go. Done. Now give it a good drink, just like so, and uh, that should do it. And give us a few days, it should perk back up. And give us a really heavy drink. That soil drains really well, it's drying out pretty quick. I'll actually probably let it sit there for a little while. Good, glad to have that done. So I'm going to let these finish soaking until the humidity comes up a little bit higher, and then I'll go ahead and pull them up. That way they stay wet longer. In the meantime, let's go have a look at the Saracenias. Now, my Saracenias, I had planned on burying in the ground, but the ground froze 11 inches. And yet, that's 
makes it kind of hard to dig. It went from warm to freezing very, very fast. So last minute when we had that night and the negatives, well, we had multiple nights, but it was extremely negative. I ended up taking my Saracenias and I threw them in a yard waste bin with a bunch of leaves. Not ideal, but better than nothing. Look at how sad and depressing it is out here. Oh, I hate winter so much. So, here they are. Okay, these guys are actually still pretty cold, so that's good. This was frozen solid, and it feels like it's kind of started to thaw out. There is some mold in here, so I'm going to sprinkle some sulfur powder on that. But I don't... See, here's the problem. They need an extended period of cold, and I just don't think they're going to get it this year. Unfortunately. So that may affect their spring growth. But hey, what can you do? I can't... I mean, I guess I could stick them in my refrigerator. But I don't, I don't really want to do that. And it is so dry. We're actually in a severe drought at this point. The air is horribly dry. And my poor plants are getting freeze burnt. Even though... I mean, they have as much anti-transpiring on them as I can put on them, and I've had them covered when it's cold, but it's not great. This azalea is normally evergreen, but uh, not this year. And I don't think this is the cold. This is just the dry winds. But hey, it's what it is, right? It's got my fingers crossed that things come back for me in the spring. That's the main thing. The bananas, the gingers, the Chinese fan palm. I, th I think when I started this blog, I talked about these guys being horribly dry and sad, but... They're picking up. That's good news. Oh, and if you're wondering, the flowers did perk back up. I still think when I change the water out, probably tomorrow, I'm going to cut the lilies down a little bit more so they're more in there with the hydrangeas, but looking better. Smells fantastic, too. Pumpkin, where are you going? Pumpkin? You say hi? Okay. You good girl. Oh, look at those stretches. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, doggies. You just want some love? Yeah. Okay, bye-bye, pumpkin. And yes, I know, the Christmas stuff is still up. I can't stretch my arm out, so it's going to have to wait a while. Did I ever show you guys my Brussels sprout ornaments? Aren't those ugly? But they're so ugly that I really like them. I know this looks horrible. Oh, oh. Hey, but yeah, yo, you're such a good girl. Yes, you are. Now, and one of the other nice things about having the warmer temperatures in here is I'm getting a lot of plants bouncing back from their dormancy, which is nice because a lot of my plants don't even go dormant because they're tropicals. This is an acalpha, and I was a little worried that I was going to lose it, but it's got a lot of new stuff popping up on it. Seems to be enjoying the heat. All right, and I have decided that I'm going to hold off on mounting the orchid because I actually think that's worthy of its own video. There's a lot of stuff that I want to talk about with it. It would take up too much time here. So that's going to wait, but it's basically I'm going to put this on there. But obviously there's more to it than that. But there were a couple things I wanted to talk about real quick. First, somebody asked me if I have a preference with my orchid pots, clay versus plastic. And... I felt like it would take too long to type out that response, so I thought I'd just address it here. I don't necessarily... Okay, I guess I do have a preference, but it's sort of complicated. It depends on the orchid for me. I like the way terracotta or clay pots look a lot more than the plastic pots. I do like using clear plastic pots because I like seeing what's going on down in the underpants of the plant. You know, see what's going on with their roots and everything particularly mostly for my Phalaenopsis orchids because they like to be watered more frequently and so they're the ones where I worry a little bit more about potential rot from being overwatered. So I like to see what's happening in there. Otherwise, everything else, I'm pretty cool with using clay pots. The uh, glazed clay pots sometimes are a little bit more tricky, but I like the way they look even better. So it really does depend. Wooden baskets are great. I don't really have any because... It's a long story, but I may start moving some things to wooden baskets and hanging baskets with some cocoa liner. I actually already have the baskets. I just need to get the liner. So that's that's what that is. It really just depends on what you want to see. For some of my orchids, I like to see what's going on with their roots if I know that it's a plant that likes 
more water and is potentially going to be more prone to rot or something happening down in the pots. Especially when I'm using this aquaponics water during the winter time. I want to see what's going on in the pots. Otherwise, terracotta. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot here. I'm sorry. Just remember, I need to give this Tillandsia a quick soak too. Let that float around for a little while. I only do that like probably once a month, if even. The silvery Tillandsias that are more like fuzzy looking usually don't need as much water and they're going to be more prone to rotting if you water them too much. So I don't water that one very often at all. Okay, and the last thing. Next week is the Orchid Show here in St. Louis. And I'm going to be going to that on a special preview members only night, Friday evening. It actually starts Saturday morning. So I'm going to be going to that, filming it, and trying to have that uploaded for Saturday's video, which means that there won't be a vlog on Saturday. I will be vlogging while I'm there, but that won't be until the weekend after. So basically next week's vlog, I'm going to try and have that out Friday morning. And then I'm going to go to the Orchid Show, film, edit that, and that'll be out Saturday. Does that make sense? Nobody probably cares, just letting you know if you're confused as to why there's not a vlog on Saturday. It's because I'm going to release it a day early. And then uh, there will be multiple. Next, The next few weeks is probably going to be fairly orchid heavy. But it just depends on what's at the orchid show. There are some things I'd like to find and get, but I don't know if they'll have them. I'd like to get some more catacetums, larger ones that I can protect a little bit more easily from the squirrels. And um, I want to pick up some more papiopedulums. Definitely some more Papio Pedulums. They usually have really good prices on those there. But uh, we'll see, because I stopped buying orchids last year, so I haven't really spent much money on orchids, so I could potentially go to the orchid show and spend a buttload of money and get a ton of them, because it's the only time of year I can really buy orchids and see them in person, other than Phalaenopsis orchids. But it just depends on what's there, so we will see, and I'll be taking y'all along with me. Oh, and look at all these lovely buds. Over here on the Hamilia Patens. It's enjoying things. Hibiscus got some yellow, dropped its leaves. I think that's just from the shock and temperature change. But it's doing fine. It looks like it may have some little baby buds coming up, but who knows what'll happen to those. This passion flower is doing great, starting to take off. That's gonna be interesting if that flower's in here, if the scent, because that's the Passiflora incense. I did a video on it. And its flower is so fragrant that I'm worried that in an enclosed space it might be kind of nauseating, but I don't know. We'll see. Okay, yeah, I'm just rambling at this point. So, I'm going to say goodbye now. I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to comment down below because I really enjoy talking to everybody. You can follow me on Snapchat, Trop Plant Party, Instagram, Tropical Plant Party, and Twitter, Tropical Plant JC. I'll put all that down in the description below. Don't forget to like the video. It helps a lot. And subscribe as well. I upload multiple times a week. And as always, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.